This is Great Western Trail Argentina. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to play the differences between Argentina and the original Great Western Trail. So this video is for the GWT veterans. Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we are just going to focus on what is different about Great Western Trail Argentina from its uh, original predecessor, Great Western Trail. So we're gonna be looking at these ships here. This is probably the biggest, most noticeable difference um, that you're putting cattle on ships and then delivering them to European ports, which is over here. They don't have to be uh, next to each other. This is just kind of how I have everything fit on the table. After that, we are gonna talk about uh, the farm hands here. Uh, you can see uh, on my player board, you have a fourth row of workers, but they're going to be out on the board, similar to how bandits uh, and obstacles used to be out on the board in the original Great Western Trail. And then the last thing, uh, a very simple mechanic here that kind of goes along with the farmers is the exhaustion cards. And other than that, this game plays um, pretty much just like original Great Western Trail. All right, to start off our discussion, let's talk about these boats. When you uh, deliver your um, cattle um, to Buenos Aires, that's essentially Kansas City in the original game, you, instead of putting them on a uh, train that goes to a specific city and you mark that city, you're gonna put them on a boat. These boats may stay here in the harbor the entire game and you'll just get end game victory points for them or they may deliver at certain points throughout the game to these European cities. Now, what's slightly confusing is that the first thing you do when you get to Buenos Aires is that you actually deliver additional grain or you have the option to deliver additional grain to one of these cities. Now, how do you do that? You have to have a disc already in one of these, what they call quays, which are these spots up here at the top of the board. You actually get to start the game with uh, each of you having a disc in quay number one in La Havre. If, once you make it to Buenos Aires, if you choose to, and you have a disc in a quay, you can spend the grain necessary to move it into one of these quadrants. So north, south, east, or west, and then once you're in that quadrant, you can cover up whatever spot you want. Anything inside of these spaces is gonna be coins that you get immediately. Anything outside in the shields is victory points. So let's look at Rotterdam here a little closer. You can see that Rotterdam, to go to the west location, uh, only costs one additional grain. And I could either, you know, probably if I get there first, I'm covering this one up to get six coins and an additional uh, one scoring point at the end of the game. If, however, I have seven grain, which is, you know, you max out at eight. If I have seven grain, I could go here. I'm not getting any coins, but I'm getting 12 VP at the end of the game. And you can see here's two and here's four. If you have, you know, more grain than that on your board, that's fine. You only spend what you have to. Now, there are two spots here in La Havre and Liverpool that have a second quay. So this is quay number one, this is quay number two. Anything coming out of quay number two actually gets a two grain bonus. So wherever you go, say you came out of here and wanted to come down here to the bottom, you actually only have to pay four grain because you're getting a two grain, two grain bonus for coming out of quay two. So how do we get to these specific quays? Well, you can see here along all of our ships that are uh, in order from the least number of cattle points needed to the greatest. So when you get to Buenos Aires, similar to Kansas City, you count up your unique cattle and how many points do you have in your hand of cattle. And you can then put your cattle onto a boat as long as you have two things. One is enough grain to feed the cattle, but you can uh, supplement coins for grain. So you shouldn't have to worry about that because you're just now getting paid. Um, but also have the uh, number listed. So if you have eight 
cattle, or eight worth of cattle in your hand when you arrive at Buenos Aires, you could put in any one of these ships, uh, eight or below. Now, this is one of the biggest oversights I feel like uh, in the production of this game is why they went with silver, brown, and black as the three anchor colors for these three cities. Why not make them clearly distinct colors? It drives me bonkers. But as you can see here, <clears throat> this, these two are both black, all right? Uh, but then this guy up here is a brown. So from a distance, it's really hard to tell. I have seen some markers that you can pick up on Etsy, which make the browns and the blacks uh, very much more obvious. And you can place them on the boats or place them up here, uh, making these easier to read. But that's how you know. So this boat is always going to deliver to the one quay in the silver anchor, which is Rotterdam. So Rotterdam's silver. So this one's going to deliver your disc to right here. This one, however, is going to go to the black two quay, which is Liverpool way up there. So it's going to drop your disc off there. Now, how do you know when these ships are going to depart and drop off their stuff in their quay? That is over here on your worker track. So it used to be the only thing that you worried about as this coin pushed down was refilling the cattle market. Well, now you have additional spots, three additional spots where you're going to ship off all of the yellow boats. So when this crosses this line, you now send out all the yellow boats. You would kind of pull this one out, pull this one out and pull that one out. You would place those discs on those quays. So this one would go here. This one would go here and that one way up there would go here. So nothing would actually go to Liverpool on this first shipment, okay? Once you have delivered those, you remove these boats from the game and you'll replace them with new ones that actually won't ever ship off. They will simply stay there, but they're end game victory points if you get them loaded. Then as the game progresses, all the green boats are gonna ship out, be replaced by new ones, and then all the purple boats are gonna be shipped out and replaced by new ones. Anytime you have a disc just sitting in a quay at the end of the game, you get two victory points for that. Obviously though, you're gonna get more or more currency immediately if you spend the grain uh, at the beginning of your Buenos Aires phase to move them down. But again, that's entirely up to you. Um, you can see here, for example, in Rotterdam, if you only had one grain, the best you could do is one victory point. Um, you may not need the six coins and you may wanna save your grain. Keep it up there. So that is entirely up to you. There are only two boats, uh, similar to Kansas City, how you could put as many discs as you wanted to into the that first location, which I think was just Kansas City. Um, this one, you can put as many discs as you want to into the 18 boat, which is gonna get you 12 VP for every disc there at the end of the game, and the zero boat, which gives you two coins upon placing it in there, but actually loses you two VP at the end of the game. The rest of these, especially these that are going to disappear throughout the game, only can have one disc of your color in them. Whereas you, know, you can have multiple discs in uh, of multiple colors in them. And then as they are replaced, those boats as well. So anything between zero and 18 can only have a single disc of your color. So you can't keep piling into say the 13 that comes in here eventually that gives you nine victory points. That is it for the boats though. Everything else about uh, the Buenos Aires phase is just like Great Western Trail. So again, you're turning in your cattle, you're gaining the amount of money based on the point value of that hand, and then you have to spend you know, uh, the grain, if not money, which you just got, so you're always gonna have it, to put them onto the boat. Uh, and again, the first thing you get to do is come down here and choose if you want to pull something and deliver extra grain from one of these ports where you have a disc and a quay. Then you put out your A, B, and C person, depending on your choice, you refill, and then you start back over. The next big difference between Argentina and core Great Western Trail is the Granjeros, or the farmers. So you can see here that farmers are what is populated. They're out on the board. They're never gonna be over here in your uh, worker stack. Um, they're always out in the field and they need help. So in order to put them onto your board, 
can see here there's actually a fourth row now on the player boards to get them on the board and gain benefits from having them through you know various things you need to first help them out in the field now what you're going to do to help them is either if you take a path and end up stopped on a Gran Hero and you see they have the black and green hands so to pass over them you're gonna have to you know pay out to the bank a little bit of money depending on your player count and things like that whether it's a green hand or a black hand but if you end your turn on one since you're not on a building tile um, as your action you can choose to help that Gran Hero to help a Gran Hero you have to spend an equal amount of strength as that Gran Hero requires. So he requires five strength to help him out, okay? So if you, um, there's several ways you can, you can gain strength. One of those is from your player board. Uh, as you unlock discs, you can see here this would be one permanent strength you have, and then unlocking this one leads you three permanent strength. That you have so you could get it that way another way is on your player board via your workers so I'm gonna have to dig into the bag here to find some but uh, here's a couple right off the bat I saw one yeah here's two uh, that we can use in as an example these two guys have strength built into them so if these guys were on my player board that would be again another strength so if I had this guy if I had both of these guys plus um, those two discs revealed on my player board, that would be five. I would be able to help this Grand Hero. In doing so, I would gain one coin for helping him. And then I have the choice to either add him to my player board or keep him off to the side. Off to the side, he'll gain me two victory points at the end of the game. If I wanna help him, or I mean add him to my player board, I have to pay six coins here, eight, eight, and then 10, but I get a grain. You would flip him over like that and add him right there. And a lot of things in this game when you're gaining grain depend on how many Gran Heroes you have on your player board. So there is a benefit, you know, you're not necessarily paying six coins for one grain, you're paying six coins for having him there to help multiply your grain production throughout the game. Now, there are other spaces, for example, this building here, allow you to help Gran Heroes and more than one anywhere on the board. So if I ended on this location here, I could help up to three Gran Heroes anywhere on the board of my choosing, as long as I have the strength to help them. Now, how else could we accumulate? Seems like, you know, getting more than five would be pretty tough. And there's some in here like this guy is six. There's even ones that are seven and eight strength. Well, you've got your cattle along with you. So your cattle are strong, they can help. These are farmers, they need to plow their fields and stuff like that. So every cow, now these are all in my starting hand. So, um, but every cattle has a strength value on the bottom of its card. So you are allowed to discard cards from your hand in order to add to that strength value. Now you can see here, like this fella here, he's got seven strength just on him, just by himself. Or this, you know, pretty cheap cow here has seventh strength. So you may buy this cow not for his, you know, not to keep him all the way to Buenos Aires, but to use him for labor, helping out Gran Heros if that's the path you want to take in your engine building. You would discard those cards. Um, that could also be a way to get rid of duplicates in your hand or lower uh, value cards that you don't want. And that can help add to your value to help multiple Gran Heros. However, when you use cattle to help a Gran Hero, you are you know, extending yourself even further because somebody's gotta lead that cattle. Cattle is not just gonna go out and do the work itself. So you yourself will gain an exhaustion card. One exhaustion card if you use one or two cattle. Two exhaustion cards if you have uh, used three to four cattle. So these are like wounds in a standard deck building game. They just clog up your hand. They don't do much else. Um, they just make it so you don't have as good a hand. Hopefully you find a way to remove them before the end of the game because if you still have them at the end of the game, they're worth negative victory points uh, if they're anywhere in your deck. But that uh, is 
the obstacles in this game. So there's no longer bandits or you know the other standard obstacles in your way. These are going to be the ones that might slow you down on a particular path by making you pay coins, but also give the ability to help them um, make some money in the process, but then add to your engine at the end of the day. And that's the only way you can get them onto your player board. They're never going to appear over here in this uh, worker tower area. The last thing I want to talk about here is the end of the line for the train and the train Devo, which is up here. So if you make it to the end of the line here, you make it to this space with your train, you can choose to upgrade this train station. If you do, it's going to cost you seven coins and get you eight victory points. Afterwards, whether you upgrade or not, once you've made it to this spot, you're actually going to back your train up, beep, 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 and it's going to sit right here in the train depot. This means that on future turns, if you do this early enough, you can actually get your train out again, beep, 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 and come back and place another disc. So every other train station on the board, similar to traditional Great Western Trail, can only house one disc of your color on it, except for this one. So this one, which you can reach multiple times, every time having to start from the train depot and coming back around, will allow you to pay seven coins, put a disc on it to get eight VP at the end of the game. So this was just a little bit different from the core game, uh, but that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything else about this game is just like a traditional Great Western Trail. The biggest difference here being the ships delivering to the cities and then the uh, Grand Harrows and the farmers. Um, so that's going to do it for our video for the veterans of Great Western Trail. Keep an eye out for our next video where I'll do a full how to play video for anybody who is completely new to the game and for some reason is starting out with Great Western Trail Argentina. Once again, thanks for watching.